Riddler has always been one of Batman's greatest adversaries. Equipped with intellectual puzzles and mind-boggling enigmas, he seems to be one step ahead of the Cape Crusader most of the time. There have been many incarnations of the Riddler throughout films and TV shows. The most popular is probably that of Jim Carrey's charismatic portrayal in Batman Forever. But he's not the only one. Frank Gorshin and Corey Michael Smith have also played the character. Even more recently, actor Paul Dano has been chosen to play him in the new Batman film from Matt Reeves, opposite Robert Pattinson's Batman. So, riddle me this. Who is the best Riddler? Let's take a look. Frank Gorshin was the first to take on the Riddler in the 1960s Batman TV show. Well, technically the second, since John Astin played the character for two episodes. But, Gorshin is the one noted with the role, appearing in nearly every episode, the movie, and the animated films. Granted, in the animated films, that was a different voice actor, but it was still modeled after Gorshin. He was even nominated for an Emmy for the role. Little was explored in the way of Edward Nigma, or Nashton as he was originally known. We only ever saw him as a part of Batman's rogues gallery alongside the Joker, Penguin, and Catwoman. Gorshin set the bar for the iconic villain, but nothing compares to the one that followed. In 1995, Jim Carrey took over the role in Batman Forever. He modeled his take after Gorshin's, but tweaked it in his own style, making the obsessive-compulsive narcissist one of his most memorable roles. In this one, Nigma actually worked for Bruce Wayne, and invented a mind control device that used brain waves to increase his own intellect. After his idol shut him out, Nigma took on the persona of the Riddler, leaving clues all around Gotham, which when solved, revealed his true identity. If that's not textbook narcissism, I just don't know what is. Nigma was successful in brainwashing Gotham, and after a brief battle on his own private island, he was defeated and institutionalized. Jim Carrey went on to win a Kids' Choice Award the following year for the role. Not much was seen of Enigma after that, although we almost got a completely different Dark Knight Rises in that Leonardo DiCaprio was going to bring the villain to life in Nolan's Batman universe. Unfortunately though, they went with Bane instead, so we'll never know how that could have been. Then, in 2014, we got Gotham, a TV series based on the Gotham Police Department. In this, Edward Nigma was portrayed by Corey Michael Smith. He was a medical examiner at the GCPD who suffered from OCD and split personality disorder. As the series progressed, so did Ed's descent into madness, ultimately unveiling his other half to be the murderous Riddler. This version was a bit darker, definitely showcasing his intelligence by leaving Jim Gordon a variety of riddles throughout the series. Smith was later nominated for a Teen Choice Award for his work as the villain. Okay, last but not least, it's been confirmed that we are getting a new Riddler in Matt Reeves' 2021 Batman film. This time, he's played by Paul Dano. But Dano won't be playing Edward Nigma. They're actually going with his original comic book name, Nashton. This Riddler is said to be even darker than his Gotham counterpart, murdering innocent Gothamites and leaving riddles at the scene. In the film... Dano plays Edward Nashton instead of Edward Nigma. Nashton is actually the character's original last name. Anyway, it says that Nashton sang in the school choir as a kid, but gave up his passion for music to focus on a newer obsession, cryptic puzzles. He then started to carry around books of crosswords and other puzzles, earning him the name Ed Weird and causing him to get bullied a lot. Around this time, Edward noticed a young Bruce Wayne happy with his parents and grew extremely jealous. Later on, as Nashton developed an even deeper and healthy obsession with Bruce Wayne, he began a career in forensic accounting, which he believed was similar to solving puzzles. Clearly, Nashton's a psychopath. I mean, he's modeled after the fucking Zodiac Killer. What more evidence is there? There's a look into different Riddlers of TV and film. Who was the best one? Well, I'll let you decide. Alright, I'll see you later.